an accusation, and that this time it's Esmeralda. Oh, it's so wonderful, my eyes don't believe me. Well, what happened? It's Esmeralda, she's done it again. Only this time it's 18. This time it was 15, and by Jiminy, that ain't the first time. By crackety, Esmeralda done it again. 18! 18! Oh, the poor child. Come on, let's go. What's everybody moving so fast for, Rebus? Seems kind of like Esmeralda done hit it again, Paul. Do tell. Yep. <laughs> Aiming to mosey down and see Esmeralda. Uh, what you want, Ethan? Ain't you gonna give me a lift up? Can't you see I'm in a hurry? Pigs all in one lump. Sure is, Paul. Why, there must be, uh, there's one, there's one. That makes, uh, go on, you count them, Ethan. I'll start with that one there. One, three, three, three. Sure is a heap of them, Paul. Jesus, ain't you learned to count yet? Sure, Esmeralda. That's some sound, mister. Sure. Everybody will... Wait a minute. We ain't going back to Chicago. Why not? We got three weeks layoff, haven't we? Can't we talk about something pleasant? Yeah. What's hmm. the mastermind cooking up now? Yeah. Look, old timer, you handle the comedy in this turkey, and I'll take care of the business. We're going to Pitchfork, Arkansas. Where's that? What's in Pitchfork? For what ain't hey, Miss Blaine? Here it is, right here. Thousands of people are going to flock to see a famous sow. Imagine a pig with a personality. A pig with a what? Is he kidding? Let me see that. Great. So now we're going to have to take second billing to a pig. And here to Jimmy Waitley and the Sunshine Girl. The other night. I dreamed I held you in my arms When I awoke, dear, I was mistaken Then I hung my head and cried You are my sunshine, my only sunshine
that nothing else could come between. But now you've left me and love another. You have shattered all my dreams. You are my sunshine. Looks like it's time to say goodbye for a while. This is our last broadcast until we get together again next September. It's been very nice being with you. The boys and I want to thank you for inviting us into your home. And speaking of home, folks, that's just where we're going. Until September, we'll be vacationing in my hometown of Pitchfork, Arkansas. And you all know what's happened in Pitchfork. A lady by the name of Esmeralda has made history. Amazing thing, sir. It's so fantastic, I can hardly believe it. Here it is. Get to Pitchfork as soon as possible. And I want no superficial report. You're to investigate this pig phenomena thoroughly. We've got to find out just what makes these pigs multiply in such quantities. Yes, sir. And remember, gentlemen, you are in no way representing the slow packing company on this job. This is to be, let's say, uh, unofficial business. We understand, sir. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, sir. Goodbye. Now, uh, let's see. 18 to 1. Multiply this by 3. Well, here we are, kids. <laughs> the garden spot of the world. It's more like the green spot to me. It ain't so bad. Oh. Wait till that Ozark son goes to town on your nightclub tan. It might even be good for your blood pipe. Ooh, what a go. Hiya, friend. Can I talk to Mrs. Alden? Reckon as you can. I mean, is, uh, is she around someplace? Reckon as she is. I've heard a bit of dialogue on a more of snurd. Come on, let's go inside. There I go. All us a dreaming that I'm a seen pretty gal. Are you Mrs. Alden's husband? Not yet, I ain't. But I'm aiming to be as soon as I get around to it. Not if I can still see and smell, you pipe smoking poor cat. Oh, are you oh. Mrs. Alden? I reckon that's how I be. My name's Willie Childs, and these are my girls. Land sakes, all of them? Oh, oh, no, you see, I'm their business manager. We're a show troupe. Oh, well, if it's lodging you're looking for, I reckon I can manage it. That's fine. Are you uh, aiming to take your victuals here, too? Come again, madam? The feed bag, you dope. Oh, yes, we'll eat here. Uh, aiming to stay in Pitchfork for a spell? Oh, well, that, that all depends. You see, we aim to play your local theater. <laughs> well, thanks, I don't see how you can. What's the matter? Well, there just ain't no theater. A pig with a personality. And I do mean you. A local hop on Mars. Oh, Mar. oh, I, I don't know if you'll do no good to chase an Abby. You can't catch her. Uh, we were just having a little exercise. Well, if it's exercise you're wanting, you take these bags upstairs. Uh, come on, ladies. Look, Stoop, the bags with the handles. Oh, well, well come anyway. I will. Say, this is kind of a slow bird. What can one do here? Now, one can't do much, but two can have lots of laughs. Here, you get your carcass off that chair, you lazy bonnet, and start catching some firewood. Oh, Ma. Get now before I skin you live. I'll go, but it's again my will. Oh. oh, Ma. Move this for me, will you? Then get out of here.
Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Hurt you much? Why don't you look where you're going, you hillbilly? Hillbilly? Why, ma'am, I was uh, going that way. Ah, you look much better now, ma'am. Uh, uh, rattle you much? Well, what do you think? Well, I think you look real pretty, ma'am. Well, anyway, you're the first local yokel with any signs of life. Are there any more in Pitchfork like you? Uh, let me see. Uh, only my six brothers. Oh, boys, I hope. Uh, yeah. Uh, aim to stay around here long, ma'am? What, in this burg? There's no future here for people in my business. What business be you in, ma'am? Show business. Let's say, ye be one of them's our actresses. Yes. <laughs> I ain't never seen no real life actress before. Well, Sonny, you're going to get an eyeful. There's seven more of us. <laughs> All girls, I hope. Yeah, and stop licking your chops. Hi, fella. Hi, Bob. Oh, how you doing? Uh, uh, and more excitement in town. Has Esmeralda hit the jackpot again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's even better than that. There's a turkey in town. Girl show. I just talked to one of them. Not bad. A little fresh, but not bad. Hey, what is this, a gag? Now, what's a show troupe doing in town? I don't know, but they're here. Uh, oh. hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, fellas. You're in Pitchfork. You know how to act. Oh! Come on, sit down. Get back on the beam. Uh, you're supposed to be hillbillies. Hey, what are you talking about? Well, this dame mistook me for one of the Esquire boys, and I declared you all in. Declared us all in? Sure, wait a minute. Come here. We're going to have a lot of fun out of this. Mighty pretty girl, Abby. Yep, I reckon she is. She and Ephus aiming to get married real soon. Taint another. Abby, don't tell me there's a romance between you and Ephus. Hmm? Ain't hankering for him, especially. Well, tell me, Abby. There must be someone you're gonna marry. Oh, reckon so. I'm hankering for a fella down in Moon Creek. His name's Zeke Willow. Hmm. Fella can't even read or write his own name. Maybe so, but Zeke can read one of them there watches and he can count money. And he's sure big and strong. Ha! Huh, a quiz kid with muscles. Oh, Ain't she gonna feed me? Oh, Esmeralda did it again. for five minutes. It's Bob and the boys. What are they up to? Oh, they're fooling them city gals, wearing whiskers and acting like hill folks. <laughs> <laughs> Darn fools. Oh, them fellas always making yokes. <laughs> now don't go giving them away by busting out laughing. Oh, no. <laughs> Howdy, ma'am. Hello. Have you two met? Yeah. Fast work. Mighty fine vittles. Oh, yes. Mighty pretty gals, too. Friends of yours, ma'am? Oh, I must be forgetting my manners. Pardon me. Uh, girls, I'd like to have you meet. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Didn't give it. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be Zeke, could it? Could be, but it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am. 
Ma'am, if my brother Elzebub won't tell you his name is Elzebub, then I'll tell you his name is Elzebub. Thanks. What's your name, cutie? Oh, shucks. Ma'am, if my brother Elbediah won't tell you his name is Obadiah, then I'll tell you. It's Obadiah. If this ain't the corniest routine I ever heard. Hey, you, flat top, send those potatoes up here. And no cracks. Best potato I ever ate. Mighty fine little. Yep. You folks feel the mighty far, I reckon. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, 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 <laughs> Say, what do you boys do around your evenings for excitement? Just a heap of satin. You can mosey on down to the pond if any you want and throw rocks at them there bullfrogs. No, thanks. I'm a terrible shot. Isn't there a movie or a bowling alley or something? Or a nightclub? Maybe the folks are reminded to hear some singing. Oh, do you boys sing? Yeah, sure, and play instruments, too. Uh, just a hobby, man. Oh, that's very interesting, Elzebub. I bet you're good, too. How about singing for us? Oh, sure, if any of a mind to ask us. Well, we're asking. Aren't we, girls? Yeah. Well, yeah, then we'll be a fetching our instruments. <coughs> Come on, fellas. <laughs> be good. I think I'll go upstairs and put on some more so the mail number five. Listen, if we're smart, we'll get down to that pond and get a load of those frogs. Bert. 
birds and the bees, so there won't be any doubtin'. I'm way out west for a good long rest, way back on Yodel Mountain. Right at the end of the night, we're back on your mountain. You'll jump right out and catch me out and tell the child sure out. is a caution. <laughs> yeah, she does everything you wonderful. Just like that. This is my girlfriend. The possum, ain't she? <laughs> yes, she's beautiful, too. Well, come on, you join the party. <laughs> Everybody wants to get into the act. I, I want you to tell all these nice ladies and gentlemen, what is your name? My name is Clunky. That's right. You see, when she was just a little baby, she fell in the head and went clunk. I did not. I went clink. No, that was on the second bounce, remember? I only must have been dropped on his head, too. Sure, and he went squish. Now, I want you to be one of them little kids' kids. I want some peanuts. All right, after a while, I give you peanuts. But first tell me, what is C-A-T? That's a cat. Good. D-O-E? That's a dog. Oh, that's well. Now, now, what is F-A-N? Oh, that's easy. F-A-N? Oh, oh. Clunky, what does Mama do when she's hot? Drinks beer. <laughs> Peanuts. If you say that again, I keep you licking. Now look, I want you to sing your little song. Hey, want some. I said not. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You leave go my finger. Oh, oh, clunky, leave go the finger. Leave go my finger. You hear me, clunky? Oh, oh, clunky. Listen to me. Here, yes, I never, I never seen such an absolute kid in my life. Here, now look here. I want you to be a little lady and sit there. I want some peanuts. All right, I give you peanuts. Open your mouth. There. Now sing. <laughs> Excuse you, you see, one of them peanuts got stuck in her lumox. <laughs> Here, now, Clunky, I, I, I really want you to sing that song good. No, not now. After a while, I give you more peanuts. You sing. Say, listen, these guys would be great on the radio. You know, Willie, I was thinking the same thing. Say, Elzebub, we're certainly indebted to you for a very entertaining evening. <laughs> Glad you like the songs, ma'am. Music with me is just a hobby. Well, son, I'd, uh, I'd like to talk with you about uh, your little hobby. Not tonight. Talk to him tomorrow. Right now, Elzebub's going to take me out for a breath of air. That is, if he doesn't mind. Mighty pleased to, ma'am. Pitchfork looks kind of pretty in the moonlight, don't it? Well, the moonlight does seem to improve it some. Have you always lived in Pitchfork? Yeah. Don't you ever think of leaving here? Not especially, ma'am. 
don't call me ma'am. My name's Doris. Well, we ain't known each other but a mighty brief spell, and I ain't aiming to get too familiar. You know, Elzebub, anyone with talent can't expect to find much success here in Pitchfork. Well, Pitchfork's where I belong, I reckon, because I ain't got no talent for nothing, except for maybe, well, milking cows and such. But what do you call the way you and your brothers sang and played tonight? Just a hobby, ma'am. Let's sit down a minute. Sure, ma'am. Elsa, were you always bashful and shy like this? Well, I, I reckon Elviry don't think so. Who's Elviry? Gal. Really? And you know something? We kissed once. You did? Tell me about it. Well, Elviry and me, we were just a setting like this. We weren't doing nothing special. Just, just a setting when, when something like the devil must have gotten into her. Because the first thing I knew, she threw her arms around me like this. And then she, she pulled me tighter and tighter, like this. And then before I knew it, she kissed me, like this. <laughs> well, right then I'm kind of riled, and I says to Elvira, Elvira, you hadn't ought to done that. You see, we'd only known each other 12 years, and I'm feeling real peculiar-like. You were? Uh-huh. But Elvira, she's feeling downright on me. And the first thing I knowed, I reckon you think I'm a measly polecat for a telling. Go on. It's very interesting. Well, it's nigh on to nine o'clock, Elsie Bub. Time to be a bedin'. Back in there again. <laughs> you mean she sort of likes to stay in that mud? Never seen nothing like it. Sixteen minutes past four. Reckon it's time I got my victuals ready for supper. By golly, she's right. Amazing people. Well, what do you think? I don't know. I got a wild idea. You perhaps think I'm crazy, but... Go on. Well, it's about this mud. Could it be possible? Gentlemen, this is astounding. According to the analysis, this mud contains a potent element which is highly beneficial to pigs. Yes. It also apparently has a current of mineral content that's equal to hot springs or Baden-Baden. This opens up an entirely new field for us. Mud baths, a great health resort. People would flock there by the thousands. Gentlemen, we're not interested in people. Our concern is with pigs. I think, sir, the great possibilities of this thing. That's exactly what I'm thinking. With this mud as our ally, there can be but one result. The slow packing company will corner the pig industry. Now, I want you both to get back to Pittsburgh and buy that property. Yes, sir. Ma. Hi. Look what come for us, a telegram. Telegram? Land shape. Don't like telegrams. Too much trouble to read them. Oh, but this might be important. See what it says. Collect. No, not there. Here. Oh. Uh, this is from the uh, State Department. Agra, Agra. You've had more learning than me. What's it say? Well, Ma, this is from the State Department of Agriculture. It says here that the commissioner is coming to see you and Esmeralda. Land sakes, what for? To give Esmeralda a blue ribbon. Can't see where a ribbon's gonna make Esmeralda look any prettier. First time in ten years I've had this kind of glove and eating dress on. Fits kind of snug in places, don't it? It looks well, Mrs. Alden. But if you don't cut down that fried chicken, you're gonna keep bulging in the wrong places. When I was 16, my husband could span the way. Gosh, Ma, sure feel snickerty. Abby, mm -hmm. you look just like a glamour girl. Wonder what Zeke will do if he saw me now. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Ollie. Oh, Ollie. Uh, say, did you get a ball and bat with that outfit? Oh, no, this is page 91 in the catalog. Item uh, 1468, uh, FOB with COD. What year? Well, I think it was uh, 1902. Mm, you know, uh, that's a snazzy suit. Oh, yes, it was made to order. Made to order? Yes, I don't know who for, but I got it. Ah, you're the most wonderful looking man I've ever met. Oh, you only say that because it's true. Ollie, get out of them fancy clothes and look after his rally. Oh, but Ma, the commission is the Yes. All right, Ma. I'll see you later. Gosh, Ma, you sure look pretty. Why, Elzebub, have you been using that catalog too? I like it, ma'am. Oh, it's very becoming, but you've forgotten something. 
What man? <laughs> Your Lone Ranger badge. <laughs> Anybody dead? Jennifer Jenkins, ain't you a getting dressed? I don't feel naked. Oh, old polecat? Ain't you hear that the commissioner's coming down here to Pitchfork to give Israel the uh, ribbon? Ain't coming to give me no ribbon. Even I knew it wouldn't look good. <laughs> Midgets. And that's why I was saying again, friends, this is a great day for Pitchfork, a great day for you, a great day for Esmeralda. <laughs> How did this wonderful sow give birth to so many pigs? I'll tell you. You see, years ago when pigs come out, they brought out a little cat for and they didn't have any force. The farmer would always take the Meldrick and would bring out the force and he'd work through. And he'd say, well, here we have a force's race. And then look, they say, well, are there any cat Are there any bobbers? No, because they haven't received a mortgage, says, you see. But we didn't care for the boss's sabre bait. But they have proven that Esmeralda has a capital priest for the boss to salvage And it brings out that <laughs> and gives you that little capital face for the boss to See, Ma, that's what a college education will do for a feller. You're absolute. <clears throat> My friends, this is indeed an historic moment in the annals of our fair state. The eyes of the entire country are centered upon you upon you and Esmeralda. You have done yourselves proud. That is sufficient for me to say. I did not come here to make a speech. Actions speak louder than words. And believe me, friends, Esmeralda has provided plenty of action. And I'm sure you're anxious for the program to continue. So let me say that I have a real treat in store for you. Pitchfork's famous sons, Bob Hamlin and his boys. You've heard them on the radio, and now they're going to entertain you with some of the songs I know you love to hear. Come on, Bob. Bob, what happened to the beard? Above, huh? A guy takes a girl for a sleigh ride in the middle of July. to make the presentation now, Mrs. Alden. Where's Esmeralda? Well, I can't understand why Ole ain't a brunger. Ma, something terrible has happened. Esmeralda, she's gone. Ole, 
Are you crazy? I wish I was, but that ain't the worst of it. All the other sounds is gone too, even Gwendolyn. Huh? This is highly irregular, Mrs. Alden, highly irregular. Now, don't you go to worrying. You go and find them sows, Olin. But, Ma, I even thought if I was a pig where I would go. So I went there and I looked, but they couldn't even find me. Them sows are rooting someplace. Now you go find them. Something's got to be done. You better play another number, son. We're having pig trouble. Be glad to help, Commissioner. All right, boys. Stay away from my heart. What do you think of that? It just Esmeralda's missing. It looks like Esmeralda's gone. Esmeralda's gone. I can't find them, Ma. Oh, them sounds must have strayed. I thought you was a watching them only. But I was watching them. I slept by Yemeni. I locked in the pen myself this morning. Well, something's got to be done, Mrs. Alden. This will be very embarrassing for me. Oh, oh Lem, you're a wonderful hog caller. Would you please holler for Esmeralda? Sure, I will. If you can't get Esmeralda back, nobody can. Come on, start a harem. I'll try. Tiguri! Tiguri! Pig, 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 pig. She down. Oh, Mrs. Tompkins, you got a beautiful voice for hogs. Would you please call for Esmeralda? Sure, Ollie, I'll try to get that old sound for you. who can get Esmeralda back. That's Juniper. He's right, Ma. Juniper's the best hog caller in the whole state of Arkansas. Oh, well, why is that good for nothing environment anyhow? He's over here. Hello. Juniper, you're the best hog caller in Arkansas, so get Ma Alden's hogs back. Too tired. Oh, now listen, Juniper. Think what this means to all of us. Look at poor Ma Alden here. Been looking at her for a long time. Ain't done no good as far as I can see. Juniper, what are you talking about? If and you don't know by now, you ain't no use for me to tell him. Look at here, you old budget. Get your carcass off that bale of hay and start a calling for my Esmeralda. Ain't aiming to do no such a thing. Oh, come on, Juniper. We've got to get Esmeralda back. You're the only one who can do it. Reckon is how I am. Well, what are you waiting on? Waiting on you, I reckon. Been waiting for about ten years. What do you mean, Juniper? Make yourself clear. There isn't much time. Well, reckon's how I can get them hogs back from all of them. If and she'll marry me. Not if you bring back every sow in Arkansas. Then I'll just be arrested. Look, Ma Alden, this is serious. If we don't get Esmeralda, you'll be disgraced. The whole town will be disgraced. You might as well marry him, Ma. He'll be hanging around the house anyhow. Please, Ma, poor Esmeralda may be lost somewhere up hills. If you don't marry him, we'll be in a heap of trouble. Well, I'll be in a heap of trouble if I do. All right, you ornery jackass. Looks like I can't do nothing else. But if you'll get my Esmeralda back, I, well, I reckon I just got to marry her. <coughs> Let their sound as good as home right now.
I know an MC in New Yorker without yell any of them. Brace yourself, folks. You ain't heard nothing yet. Probably never see Esmeralda again. Well, there's one good thing about it. I won't have to marry that old. Here's <laughs> old Randy. Here she comes now. <laughs> Wait a minute, Juniper. You're in fine voice. Congratulations. Better congratulate Ma Alden. She's getting the best of it. Well, now I guess we can go on with our celebration. Now, Mrs. Alden, will you come forward, please? Mrs. Alden, we're all very proud of you, and of Esmeralda, too. Yeah. And on behalf of our fair state, I present to you this token of appreciation. <laughs> and now, Esmeralda, it gives me great pleasure to bestow upon you this award. show, wasn't it? Not half as good as the show you put on, Elzebub. I was just having a little fun. I figured you'd be a good sport about it. I hope you enjoyed it. Do you, Juniper Jenkins, take Matilda Alden for your lawfully wedded wife? Yep. Do you, Matilda Alden, take Juniper Jenkins for your lawfully wedded husband? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. This is it. There ain't no pig worth it. Well, kiss the bride, Juniper. Don't rush me, Judge. <laughs> I was just a-thinking. If an I marry Abby now, what can folk be out to you? Well, let me see. Abby be my daughter. You'd be my son, my son-in-law, too. Now, that'd make more your... No. No, you'd be her... Well, that ain't it. Son, as near as I can figure, I reckon you'd be your own grandpa. Good boy. Now, wait a minute, son. Let me clear this thing up for you. You see, if you marry Abigail, you want her salary to salary more You couldn't bring the sooner more straight. Look at you. If you act as soon as force the strays and find out your rate, the marriage is coming out in force. It isn't just a cat for a cent, mm -hmm. or a cap of simply hitting so forward. It's a cow of even the sound which is paid it. Cap <laughs> Exactly like I said. My name is Valeria Tanya, the Milo twin. In the hills of Arkansas, sitting by his mall and fall, there's only rifle shooting out in the air. Oh, he loves his mountain feuds, and he also loves the food. When he goes home to supper, you will hear. Oh, pass the biscuits, Miranda. I'm just as hungry as sin. Pass the gravy, Miranda. I need some soft to soften me. Since nine o'clock, I've been sitting on a rock, shooting everything inside. I shot the boys and a dozen Barton boys, shooting gills and man an appetite. Pass the biscuits, Miranda. Kiss me goodbye. Darn those biscuits, Miranda. I knew they'd get me by and by. Yeah, yeah it's quite a party, Ma. Yeah. Excuse me. Doris, I'm sorry about what happened. How about sort of forgetting it? It's already forgotten, including you. any liquor in this. Somebody must have walked by and waved a bottle at it. Esmeralda must have walked through it. <laughs> well, may I help you, Miss Blaine? Well, thank you. If you expect to get even a momentary lift from this, you're going to be awfully disappointed. 
You're right. Tastes more like hair tonic. <laughs> uh, shall we all adjourn to my room upstairs? I can promise you something a little stronger. Why not? Fine. Hello, but you'd like to pour me a little drink? <laughs> Supposing you pour me one. Oh, excuse me. I make the wrong kind of mistake. That's all right. <laughs> I'm always getting unmixed. Good drink to the bride and groom, huh? Good <laughs> there. <laughs> well, here's a punch in the purse. Skull. Take care of yourself. No, you take care of yourself. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the matter? Something I put in? <laughs> Something you left out. What is this stuff? Well, that's Swedish punch with a little squirrel whiskey. Squirrel? Why didn't you try Old Eagle? Oh, I don't want to fly. I just want to do that. There you are. Yeah. Well, shall we uh, drink to the bride and groom? What, again? Yeah. Let's drink to somebody else for a change. To us. <laughs> that's good, ain't it? Oh. Yeah. All right, Juniper, remember the bet. You're going to tell us the name of each individual piece of wood by smelling them. Right. And I'm ready to start a smelling. How about this? That there's pine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guess this one. Uh, let me see this. <laughs> That's the same as the last one. That's pine. Only this is naughty pine. <laughs> you can't fool Juniper. I know my wood. You better pay me off. Just a minute, Juniper. Here's one more smell. And if you guess that, you win the bet. That's uh, pussy will. <laughs> and now Ma will throw the bridal bouquet. <laughs> So you see, my dear, this wonderful mud will be a boon to this slow packing company. We've had the finest hogs on the market. And more of them than anybody else. Well, what about more Alden? Where does she come in? Oh, she'll be taken care of. She doesn't know the value of the mud hole. It should be hard to make a deal with her. But you say this mud has a curative value. Good for people with uh, rheumatism and things like that. It's a shame to waste it all on a lot of hogs. Perhaps you're right in a way, but you see, Mr. Cashin isn't interested in rheumatism. His whole life is wrapped up in pigs. I see. A family man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, family man. <laughs> Abby, I've been looking all over for your mother. I want to talk to her. Do you know where she is? Sure, but you're going to have to holler powerful loud if you want her to hear you. What do you mean? Oh, she's gone to Little Rock. She left here a while ago, them two city fellers. Bob! Hello, Doris. Looking for a little exercise? Are you kidding? Uh, Bob, I've got to talk to you. Talk to me? Yeah, it's about Ma Alden. Anything wrong with it? Plenty. Come on. I think uh, $5,000 is a very fair price, madam. I reckon it is. But it ain't easy to give up a place you've been living in all your life. But, madam, you mustn't allow sentiment to interfere with good business. And think of the beautiful new home you can have with the money we're paying. And the handsome profit, besides. Well, maybe you folks is right. I reckon I can buy Zeke Muckenfuss's place. It's got all for pretty wallpaper. I suppose you have the deed to the property with you, madam? Yes, sir. I have it right here. If you just sign right here, Mrs. Jenkins. Ma'am, Jenkins. Uh, I beg your pardon, madam. But isn't your name Alden? It was up until yesterday. Now, that's right. You see, uh, she married a character named Jenkins. We were both at the ceremony. Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but you can't do business with Mrs. Jenkins. She doesn't own that land. What? Does it? Of course she does. You do own it, don't you, madam? I sure do. And it ain't for any city lawyer to tell me I don't. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Jenkins. But this deed contains an appendage. It says that in case you remarry at any time, the property automatically reverts to your daughter Abigail. Gentlemen, 
A girl by the name of Abigail Alden owns that land. Abigail? Malden, did you sell a property? What's the meaning of this, young lady? Tell me, Malden, did you sell it? Did you? Well, I reckon I couldn't. The property ain't mine anymore. It belongs to Abby. On account of me marrying that good for nothing Juniper. That's the best thing that ever happened to you. Come on, let's get out of here. We got a lot to talk over. Thanks for everything. You boys should go on the wagon and say hello to your boss, Porky. I'll take that, Consular. Well, looks like Mr. Cashin's going to be very happy. In a pig's eye. Well, all this is very interesting if what you say is true. However, there'll have to be a thorough investigation. And the matter will be brought to the attention of the legislature. Well, how long will that take, Governor? Well, you can never tell about the legislature. How would it be if my boys and I could arrange our national broadcast from Pitchfork Springs? Would that help, sir? Immensely. You boys are nationally famous. Why, the attention of the entire nation would be centered on our springs. Yes, I think the legislature would act more quickly then. Uh, that's great. I'll get in touch with my agency and see if we can arrange it. Do you think you can, Bob? Why not? We've never had any trouble before and don't expect any now. Well, that clears everything up for the time being. Oh, we'll be running along, Governor. I can't tell you how much we appreciate your letting us talk to you. Good day. Goodbye. Bye, Mrs. Jenkins. Uh, goodbye, ja uh, Governor. <laughs> uh, got a nice place here. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Oh, why don't you get up and help them folks? Can't. Yeah. Too tired just to watch them. Well, we didn't make any money, but we had a lot of laughs. Yes, everything turned out all right. Thanks to your idea about going to the governor, it looks like Pittsburgh's going to be a state-sponsored health resort. Well, you didn't do so badly either. Getting your agency to let you broadcast from here. Maybe we're a couple of heroes. <laughs>
good friends, the Pied Pipers, who have come down here as a special favor to me. It's a tune called The Hit of the Season and is dedicated to our celebrated Esmeralda. Thank you. Here they are. Kid, what do you think of Pitchfork now? <laughs> Certainly on the map, thanks for those pigs and that mud. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I contributed something to this. Not half as much as Esmeralda. And this, ladies and gentlemen, brings to a close the first broadcast from Pitchfork Springs. We have a wonderful bit of news for you. We have just received word that the state legislature has voted a magnificent appropriation to make Pitchfork Springs the great new spa of America. We hope to see a lot of you here. And now, good night to you all. Thank you, Bob Hanlon. Ladies and gentlemen, you're invited to tune in again next week for the Pitchfork Springs broadcast. Same time, same place, same station. This is KDLY signing off and bidding you good night. Bob, during the broadcast, I received a telegram from the Slow Packing Company. They want to sponsor our program. <laughs> what? Oh, that's great. Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? No. Now grab those benches and get them out of the way. Let's have plenty of room. How you like it, Ephraim? Reckon if I had a suit like that, Abby would marry me instead of that uh, Zeke Willow. You don't know how it's done. Three big, 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 three
Okay, I show the way we do this in Sweden. Give us room, Ethis. stick around for a while. I would like to take one more look at Pitchfork in the moonlight. Well. Well, does it look any better to you now? Yeah, somehow it does. Well, why don't you say something? This hay sure smells sweet. It's a remarkable observation. <laughs> Isn't this the kind of a night you were telling me about, uh, Elviry, remember? Elzebub? Shucks, uh, clean forgot that story now. I can't remember a thing. Well, maybe I can recall it for you. It seems that you and Elviry were sitting just like we are now. Yes, that's right. And then all of a sudden she uh, threw her arms around you, like this. And then she kissed you, like this. I reckon you think I'm a measly polecat. Maybe. But I sure love polecats. 